an incredible campaign. We don't know how it's going to turn out, but I've got to tell you, in the history of MMP, no third party has ever won a seat without the endorsement of a major party leader. And there are... Can I just, a little interlude. Chloe, how are you doing? Marcus Slash here, broadcasting from Auckland. We have the marijuana referendum coming up. Look, uh, I, I, I'm going to vote no. Chloe, you sound very informative, but I'm afraid I've got to disagree with you. I just feel absolute despair that you could possibly be considering this. It's the most dangerous thing you could imagine. I'm it's really, a- I'm really sorry to hear about. Yeah, I'm sorry that you talk such rubbish too. <laughs> you're a very dangerous woman. I'm just a random person who somehow fell down the rabbit hole and became, you know, a representative. There's a benefit in being able to be genuine because far too many politicians um, hold up these facades which everybody just sees through anyway as BS. Um, But yeah, I mean, like, don't get me wrong, I definitely inspire some massive hatred from some people. I just, you know, have to be conscious of the fact that I'm effectively kind of campaigning for three things, like, want to grow the Green Party vote, you know, because, like, despite how I spend all my time talking about weed, well, not all my time, it's the only time that I really get in the media space, but I really care about this thing called climate change <laughs> and inequality. Um, so, yeah, growing the Green Party vote, obviously winning Auckland Central and then getting a positive vote um, for the cannabis referendum. Three tricks green, if you will. Am I in the right place? I'm just hanging out because um, Simeon and other people aren't here. I expressed interest in potentially coming to the um, drug debate at University of Auckland and there's space today, right now. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, just if you're keen. Yeah, you can come if you want because there's like a really random thing. What are you doing? I'm trying to read all the textbooks that I didn't read when I was at uni. <laughs> I was like, oh, sexuality great. down under. Yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> Can you guarantee to me that by uh, legalising and controlling that there will be an elimination of the black market a under this huge legislation? Huge elimination. Can you huge elimination. elimination. No, if you go and look at other countries around the world, the gangs still have a huge amount to play in this, in this market. And Less guarantee, than they did before. Guarantee to me that this regulated model will mean that there is an elimination of the black market and well, that cannot, talking, be, gar- talking, that talking cannot to be guaranteed to me by anyone on this stage. It took 10 years for alcohol prohibition to move into a space of a legal regulated market in the States. Legalization is about controlling that supply chain, imposing a duty of care, because drug dealers in the illicit market do not check ID. Michael, just, just make- One of the real challenges is narrative. So if there is kind of a narrative of it's going to go this way or it's going to go that way, then it becomes a challenge of, well, people like to back a winner. <laughs> so do they then end up turning out or do they end up deciding to kind of give up? So, yeah, there, there is definitely a sense of urgency at present around, um, like, this actually just will not pass unless people actually turn out and vote. How do you genuinely like look after yourself and the lead up to a? Election? You genuinely don't. Um, I mean, it's uh, this is a deeply inhuman um, job, um, and uh, it therefore probably actually has a detrimental impact on politicians' abilities to be humans, um, because they're all um, kind of put in a position where to to fall or to fail, um, which are very human things, um, is to be absolutely destroyed. (laughs) So there's this bravado and facade um, that becomes almost a survival mechanism.
the polls show the yes vote narrowly in the lead, but it won't stay that way if the National Party has its way. So, here to debate the pros and cons are the Green Party's Chloe Swarbrick and National's Nick Smith. Chloe, first to you. Uh, the major benefit of legalising cannabis is what? Uh, that we acknowledge the reality of what is presently happening, that being 80% of New Zealanders will use cannabis by the time they're 21. Most people will have access to it while they're at high school. We have an opportunity to intervene in that very problematic status quo to increase community wellbeing and decrease harm. Right, so decrease harm, major benefit. Nick Smith, what would be the biggest risk of legalising cannabis? I worry about the mental health. Uh, obviously, you've got issues of road fatalities, increased uh, those sorts of problems but it will not make New Zealand a healthier... I never wanted to be a politician. I don't care about a career in this. I care about change, and I am willing to blow up my job for doing the right thing. This is the right thing. You know, damned the consequences for me, if I can help to progress this issue to a place where we get change for people and that improves their lives, then... Shit, what else is the point? This is a bad time for us to be normalising drugs that cause harm. Chloe? The best way to increase community uh, well-being and decrease harm is to put in place controls, which this bill will do. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things, right, where I... I said to these guys earlier, like, worry about being cocky, because I'm like, I, I know this shit, and I'm like, I, I also worry about repeating myself, and like, when I have said it so many damn times. <laughs> uh, I think that our politics needs to be tailored to work for all demographics. If people want, for example, the cannabis referendum, which right now is polling on a nice edge, to pass for healthier communities across this country, if people want a strong green heart in government, then they need to turn out and vote. Cool. No worries. I've got to run. I'm good. Hey, lovely to meet you. Thank you. Alright, see you guys later. See you later. Hey, nice to see you. How are you doing? Thank you. I joined for a number of reasons, but primarily because there was recognition of the interconnection of the well-being of our people and the well-being of our planet. Throughout COVID alone, we have seen a change in the street community here and the turfing out of different types of folks and their exposure to inequality in particular. And I think that there is a real tangible kind of reality in that inequality in this neighbourhood. So please, if you've ever just wanted to vote for something that you believe in, now is the chance to do it. I have um, the postcode for Auckland Central tattooed on my arm. That was not something that was like for the campaign. That was several years ago, but um, it's my home. So uh, yeah, but yeah, Emma Mello and Helen White don't have that. Chloe, I want you there. I don't want you not there. But this is a race between the National Party and the Labour Party in it's terms not. of this electorate. Oh. So it's for this, this community. It needs a voice in this government that is from this government and is... It's I'm used to being underestimated. <laughs> I think that we're pissing a few people off by making them campaign harder because nobody can take anything for granted. In order to win Auckland Central, we only need 1,500 votes to transfer from Helen to myself. Every single day right now, uh, hour to hour, basically doing everything that we can to mobilise people to vote. It very much just feels like anybody's game, to be honest. Hello! in organising it though? You decided you wanted to do I, fun? Yeah, I definitely was like, I think that we should have a drag show because no other <laughs> candidate will be able to pull off a drag show. <laughs>
there was almost like this like energy transfer and that people are hyped about participating in something bigger than themselves, which is not a feeling that you get all too frequently nowadays. And it kind of simultaneously knocks the energy out of you, but also <laughs> keeps you going. Obvious that the stuff, uh, by the way, here, queer, proud. I uh, hope they all. <laughs> I just honestly, um, in all seriousness, this has been fucking majestic. Um, this has been the best. This campaign is everything that I ever could have wanted. Uh, this is what community feels like, folks. You know, politics isn't this stuff that just happens down in Parliament where you have to feel as though it's done by these people who are professionals who are pretending they know what they're doing. Because they don't. They're all making it up. I can tell you that much. <laughs> so please, I implore you, help us make history, please. We're asking you this election to vote green twice. <laughs> but if you want to do something a little bit special, you can vote green thrice. <laughs> Thank you so much. That means a lot. It means a lot. I'm trying so hard. I just want to change shit. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, <laughs> have a lovely evening. See you later. All right, it's so good. I'm running the campaign I always wanted to with the people that I love and, and the place that I love and I care about all this stuff so much. Uh, it's just, yeah, it means so much to me. So to throw everything that I've got at it, it's just the only thing that makes sense. Other people are gonna do bad things. And that's the thing about cannabis. It's like, people are like, I am fine, but everybody else will be irresponsible. The time that you spend is pretty much every waking hour. I wake up in the morning and I look at my calendar and then I'm like, cool, I need to be here, here, here. And I will go back to back to back to back. I guess, you know, I'm the dancing monkey. I get up and say the things and do the performance, but our team ultimately, I think, enable this to be bigger than any one person. I am immensely proud to welcome to the stage the next electorate MP for Auckland Central, Chloe Swarbrick. Oh, Fano, Fano, so good, so good. You can't just think that you have to take the weight of the world on your shoulders. Because look around you. All of the people who are standing in this square today are committed to something bigger than themselves. And the reason that we are running this historical campaign here in Auckland Central is because, let's be perfectly honest with you, fuck, I love it here. <laughs> <laughs> I live here. This is the reason that I'm in politics. This is taking the kaupapa of the Greens to the streets. So realise your power. Do not let anybody else tell you what is possible because you decide that. Let's make history. Three Jack Screen! <laughs>
Auckland Central's newest MP. It was, it was very surreal. It was very surreal, but um, yeah, just honestly, it's pretty wild to now legit be the representative for my community. <laughs> it's very cool. But the cannabis control, legalization and control referendum lost by a small margin, a few percentage points. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd be lying if I said that it, it wasn't somewhat gutting. Uh, but also I'd be lying if I said that this was the end of the road. And the fact that it came down to such a slim, slim majority for the no camp, I think also really raises the spectre of what could have happened had this not become such an awfully partisan debate. Um, but hopefully it's instilled a bit of fear and the politicians who are comfortable with resting on their laurels. Not gonna let them do that anymore. <laughs>